Welcome everyone to the ASEAN News Weekend's episode. This is Vanessa. Malnutrition increased as the government unable to solve the issue since 20 years ago, said Taur Matanruak. Timorese Prime Minister Taur Matanruak said malnutrition continues to thrive in Timor-Leste as the previous government unable to solve it and it will also require 10 years more to settle the issue, said the Prime Minister. He uttered the issue at the Delhi's International Airport a few moments after touchdown from his trip to Indonesia and Singapore. We think this is an issue that can be solved only by one government administration. The malnutrition is a disease that raised from our weakness during the 20 years of rain, where we unable to find a solution for it. And this is where our problem is. It's not a simple thing. It means even though there will be changes for new administration of government, four or five times more, we may at least go through this issue, since we need to work harder in order to increase the productivity. The issue was mentioned and concerned by the Timorese president as well, Jose Ramos Horta, and calls for the government to find a solution for it. Timor-Leste is experiencing multidimensional issues, where poverty has 48% and 47 is malnutrition, food security issue 37%, unemployment 9.6%. Timor-Leste and Japan will strengthen the friendship relation through the bilateral cooperation. Kimura Tetsuya, the ambassador of Japan to Timor-Leste, stated this at the celebration of 63rd birthday of His Majesty of the Emperor of Japan at the residence of the Japanese Embassy in Dili, Timor-Leste. Kimura Tetsuya said Japan has supported many countries through cooperation in various areas, including Timor-Leste, a country that has good relations with Japan for many years by investing in the productive sector. The government of Japan, private sector, as well as civil society work together as one team towards the goal. Our mutual work covers a broad range of areas, starting from infrastructure, support for industry and social services. We will work for symbolic projects such as the construction of a new airport terminal while supporting as many grassroots projects as possible by reaching out to the communities. I would like to visit as many schools as possible during my tenure. Japan promotes the concept of human security. It is our priority to work for the protection and empowerment of every individual through the cooperation in such areas as health, nutrition, water and sanitation, disaster risk reduction, as well as education. Meanwhile, in a speech, the president of Timor-Leste, Jose ramos -Orta, said Timor-Leste is ready to support Japan's candidacy for the UN position, and so far, Japan giving a lot of support to Timor-Leste in various areas. Timor-Leste has also consistently supported Japan's candidacy for other UN positions. Japan has been an active support of SDGs, contributing to stability, prosperity, and human security in Southeast Asia region through development and improvement of infrastructure, promotion of the industry diversification, and improvement and expansion of social service delivery. In regards assistance to Timor-Leste, the government of Japan provides assistance through JICA and also via UN agencies, the World Bank, ADB, and the ADB, JICA is a lender to Timor-Leste, providing a loan of 68.7 million for the construction of roads. JICA is also committed to finance and construct a new terminal building, utilities and electricity substation at the President Nicolau Lobato International Airport. Kimura Tetsuya added, as the ambassador who just took office a few months ago, he is proud by seeing development in Timor-Leste starting to move forward slowly, expected that there will be more improvement. The Emperor's birthday celebration was attended by the Timorese president, state officials, civilians, militaries, as well as a few other entities' members. Open Society Foundation and President Republic discussed the development strategic plan. The executive director of Open Society Foundation of Malaysia, Pramesh Chandrao, said the purpose of the meeting with the Timorese president to discuss the Timor Leste's future development plans and programs. Uh, we had a very good meeting with the with President Horta, where we presented some uh, studies by consultants in terms of how um, Timor Leste can develop further. We had a review of the national strategic plan, 
We also looked at the issue of currency and how do we try to develop the country over the next uh, 15 to 20 years. Uh, it was a very informative discussion. We look, also looked at uh, renewable energy. Uh, we looked at the, you know, the blue economy and other opportunities uh, that Timor has to, to develop uh, over the next few years. So um, it was a very interesting discussion. Uh, President Hota was very positive and uh, received the uh, report well. And we will be having further discussions with President and, and his team um, as we go forward in the next few months. Meanwhile, Ong Ching Chuan, the assurance leader for PWC Malaysia, whom also an old friend of Timor Leste before its independence, said they are the friends of Timorese and they wanted to assist Timor Leste's economic development. I have been a friend of uh, Timor Leste. Uh, I have been working uh, since very early day where president, when president was in Australia. Uh, we work together to fight for the independence of Timor Leste. Today we see uh, Timor Leste become an independent nation. We are very proud for the achievement. At the same time, we think that international solidarity from us, friends of Timor Leste, want to see Timor Leste develop into a good economy, to have um, a strong welfare system, to help the people to uplift their livelihoods. Our discussions uh, with presidents is very much with sharing this dream. Open Society Foundation planned to collaborate and continue to work with Timor Leste's government and to support the country's development process, especially by paving the investments way and provide opportunity to the international market based on the national development. 2011 2030 strategic plans, which the government previously established. Chinese says as a nation's members will make independent judgments for stability and development in Asia-Pacific region. Chinese Foreign Minister Ching Gang said that Beijing believes Indonesia and other ASEAN countries will make independent judgments and choices to ensure the stability in the Asia-Pacific region. New Cold War competitiveness of great powers should not appear in the Asia-Pacific region. Countries in the region should not be forced to take sides. We believe Indonesia and the ASEAN will make independent judgments and choices based on the fundamental interest of stability, development and prosperity in the region. Ching affirmed Chan will also celebrate the code of conduct discussion while jointly maintaining the peace and stability in the contested waters that Beijing has claimed 90%. Ching was in Jakarta for a three-day visit where he is expected to meet other Indonesian ministers and ASEAN officials. Australia and Philippines discuss joint patrols in South China Sea. Uh, Richard. The Philippines and Australia discussed pursuing joint patrols in the South China Sea days after the Southeast Asian country held similar talks with the United States to counter China's growing assertiveness in the disputed waterway. Australian Defence Minister Richard Marles met with his Philippine counterpart Carlito Galvez Jr. in Manila, something they said they plan to do yearly in a bid to deepen the country's security ties. Um, both the Philippines and Australia are com completely committed to a global rules-based order. It is deeply connected to our respective national interests that the rules of the road as they apply in a body of water such as the South China Sea the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, the Freedom of Navigation, the Freedom of Overflight, all of these principles are completely central to our national interests and, as Charlie said, to our collective security. With the overlapping sovereign claims in the strategic waterway, the Philippines is ramping up its attempts to counter what it describes as China's aggressive activity in the South China Sea, which has also become a flashpoint for Chinese and U.S. tensions around naval operation. The possibility of Philippines and Australia holding joint patrols comes on the heels of similar discussions between Manila and Washington about conducting joint coast guard patrols, including in the South China Sea. A Cambodian girl dies of bird flu after being infected. Cambodia reported the death of an 11-year-old girl after she was infected by the H5N1 strain of avian influenza, commonly known as bird flu. Minister of Health Man Bun Hen in a statement said it was also the Southeast Asian country's first known human infection with the H5N1 strain since 2014. 
Health workers have since disinfected the property of Preven province, east of the capital Phnom Penh, where the girl lived. Health Secretary Yuk Sambat said another 12 persons in Preven were tested and one was found to be infected with H5N1 and their samples have been taken to Phnom Penh for analysis with results to be released later in the day. Philippine police launched investigation into murder of New Zealand tourists. Philippine authorities said it was investigating the suspect involved in the killing of New Zealand tourists in Manila. According to the statement from Philippine National Police, Nicholas Peter Stacy, 34, was killed after being robbed by two men on a motorcycle on a suburban street in Manila's financial district. Local media reported that one of the suspects has surrendered to police while the search continues for the other suspect. The killing has prompted New Zealand to issue a travel warning to its citizens about possible violent crimes in the Philippines. Filipino rescuers recover debris from crashed Chesna plant. Rescuers started retrieving the bodies of four victims aboard a light plane that crashed in the volcano in the Philippines. Handout footage and photographs from the office of Kamalik Mayor Kaloy Baldo showed rescuers scaling the active volcano as well as the wreckage and debris from the crash. <laughs> Kamalik Mayor Carlos Baldo told local media that the bodies of the four victims, which include the Filipino pilot, a crew member, and Australian nationals Simon Chipperfield and Carti Santanam, have been found on the slopes of the Mount Mayon. The Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines said the Cessna 340 aircraft was bound for Manila when it lost contact with the air traffic control shortly after leaving the airport in the Albay province. The four people on board the aircraft were employees of a Manila-based geothermal firm. Japan preparing new sanctions against Russia with G7 partners. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said Japan is preparing a new package of sanctions against Russia over its invasion of Ukraine in step with other group of seven countries. Kishida said, speaking at a news conference to mark the one-year anniversary of the invasion which Moscow calls a special military operation, Japan will also press third parties to suspend military support to Russia. His remarks came ahead of a call with our G7 leaders and Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky. G7. Britain announced a new package of sanctions against Russia, including export bans on every item used by Russia in war, while the United States has said it will also unveil new measures. Japan last month tightened sanctions against Russia, including banning some exports and freezing the assets of Russian officials and entities. Kishida did not specify the new measures being thrown up. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you again. Enjoy your weekend and stay safe, stay healthy.